All right, guys, so here's our genetics questions, and we're gonna start with this one. It says, an eight-year-old Caucasian male has repeated sinus infections and earaches, pre uh, presents for follow-up exam with parents. You review the data, and there is significant membrane potential difference in the nasal passage. The father reports that his eldest brother has had similar findings before he passed, and at a relatively young age of respiratory, and passed at a relatively young age of respiratory infection. Which of the following is most likely associated with the patient's condition? And you can tell it talks about chloride, sodium, absorption, secretion. So the key with the cystic, first of all, you know it's cystic fibrosis. It's an eight-year-old. Uh, there's some inherited genetic loading uh, for it, recurrent sinus, earaches. You gotta be thinking uh, cystic uh, fibrosis. So there's a key for step one. There's a key to the whole cystic fibrosis. And uh, let's just cover it right here. So again, Cystic fibrosis, we know that this is what? Autosomal uh, recessive, okay? But you have to know this. In the question, they're gonna tell you where it occurs. It's either gonna be in the sweat gland, okay? Which has its own set of rules, or it's gonna be everywhere else. Lung, pancreas, um, you know, nasal passages, and just basically all else, all right? You have to know where they're talking about with cystic fibrosis because in the, in the sweat gland, it looks like this. You have sodium and the chloride ion, and of course you have these little channels here um, in the sweat gland, and these are called the CFTCR, which stands for cystic fibrosis, uh, transmembrane conductance regulator, uh, something like that. So anyway, CFTCR. Now what normally happens in this thing is that, you know, the chloride ion will kind of come through here and he'll pass out. Uh, and then he'll also kind of go out into the, um, you know, out to the surface per se. And so you get a little bit of this. And of course, sodium will do kind of do the same. And then he'll also come out here with the chloride. And then of course, where sodium goes, water follows, okay? So that's normal. But when you have a, a defect with cystic fibrosis in the sweat gland of this, of this guy, then this gets impaired. And so instead of the, uh, instead of the chloride being uh, reabsorbed, okay, what happens? It, it, that doesn't happen. And then more of it gets pushed out here. And of course, where he goes, sodium's gonna follow him. And of course, where sodium goes, water follows. So what, what are you gonna see on the surface of the, of the sweat gland? A real, that, that, that real salty, you know, that real salty taste, right? Cause you got sodium and chloride together. So in this sense, when there's a defect of the CFTCR, chloride, not reabsorbed, and sodium, uh, you know, not, uh, not reabsorbed. Okay, it gets pushed out. Now, if it's anywhere else, if it's in the lung, pancreas, nasal passages, and such, it's it's more like it's more like this. You know, normally you would have chloride and, and chloride and sodium here, and of course they like to kind of come through there, and and where sodium chloride goes, sodium will follow, and then there's usually an exchange of you know sodium back. So, but what happens is that this, the chloride and sodium can't get out. It's different, right? They can't get out. So what happens? That means that if, if they can't get out and then that, that for, and therefore the, the sodium that's out here gets drawn back in. Um, and so what happens to the, to the fluid that's on the outside? It gets thicker. And that's why the fluids in the lungs are thicker. That's why the fluid in the, in the pancreas gets thick. It gets backed up, it gets blocked. Everywhere else it gets thicker and that creates a, a big membrane potential, okay? There's a big difference between what's on the inside versus the outside. Um, and so you have to know the difference between, kind of between these two. Again, sweat gland, it works like this. All the stuff gets pushed out, but in everywhere else in the body, it gets stuck on the inside, okay? So now with that information, you have to know where you're at and then just follow either of these rules. So back to the original question. It says an eight, uh, eight year old Caucasian male, repeated sinus infections, blah, 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 blah. You review the data, there's a significant membrane potential difference in the, in the nasal passage. So, okay, so we're here, right? So now we're dealing with this guy. 
that it can't get out, you know, just if we do the picture, um, and then sodium can, sodium kind of comes back in. The father reports that his eldest brother, blah, 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 which of the following is most likely associated with this patient's condition? Well, we know it's cystic fibrosis. We know it's autosomal recessive. Is it increased chloride secretion? Hmm. No, because, you know, that, that sounds, you know, it almost sounds more like the, uh, more like the first one, right? It almost sounds like it's more like a sweat gland if it was more secreted out. Decreased sodium absorption? Well, again, that almost sounds like we're almost talking about the, the sweat gland, right? Because usually sodium gets reabsorbed here, but that doesn't happen. So that would be more of a, a more of a sweat gland kind of a scenario. Increased sodium secretion, chloride secretion, yeah, that seems more of a, a sweat gland as well. Increased sodium absorption, okay, well, if it doesn't go out here and then it, sodium gets reabsorbed back in, okay, well, that's, that's a potential. Increased potassium secretion, okay, well, potassium has nothing to do with this. That's just more of a distractor. So the fact is, you know where you're at, and it's this has to apply. Now, if, if this question said something about a sweat gland, then we would have had to jump on something more along those lines, okay? But the fact is, you know where you're at. Nasal passage, if it had been lung, it could have been uh, pancreas, you're going with answer choice C, okay? So again, you have to know the difference between where you're at when it comes to cystic fibrosis. The patient's condition can be diagnosed by which of the following? Uh, sodium levels in the sweat, uh, the amount of cilia in one cc of sputum, sputum culture, chloride in the sweat, alpha-1 antitrypsin level. Well, you know, with this one, you just have to actually just know that it's going to be the, and, and most of y'all know that, just like on that first scenario, it's going to be the chloride in the sweat. Now, really what they kind of do on this, on the, on the newborn uh, screen, they do this, they call it, I think it's an IRT test, uh, immunoreactivity, um, gosh, I see if it's in there. Uh, trip, trypsinogen, immunoreactive trypsinogen. Um, it's an IRT, and then it's basically get a, a confirmation with uh, the sweat test. Okay, and then, but when you start getting all this test stuff, it's fair game for step one, but it's more of a step step two, step three kind of concept. Um, so, so this is just a distractor. Sodium levels, no, it's more of more the chloride. Um, cilia, I just made that up. Sputum culture, no. Alpha-1 antitrypsin level, you know, the, the one thing you better know with this um, is, is mainly the medication because it always shows up on those exams, both sentin, uh, competitive antagonist, uh, endothelial receptors, that's associated with this an alpha-1 antitrypsin um, condition. But anyways, the answer to this one is chloride in the sweat. This one reads, a 16-year-old male with recurrent respiratory infections with pseudomonas uh, presents for evaluation. The patient had a brother who had recurrent earaches and repeated bouts of pneumonia. So again, you're just looking at something inherited, uh, something with all this respiratory issues, earaches, you know, the otitis. Um, you've got to be thinking cystic fibrosis. Uh, parents are inquiring about treatment options. Which of the following would, would potentially improve the patient's condition? Uh, ibuprofen, sulfonamide, gentamicin, pancreatic lipase, fluoroquinolone, um, and again, we know we know this one. If you know, it's going to be the pancreatic lipase because that is affected in uh, in cystic fibrosis. Because again, remember the the fluids are remember because it was this rule that applies. These guys can't get out, so sodium chloride can't get out. Sodium gets kind of uh, reabsorbed, and so we get thicker secretions, and if we get thicker secretions here, all the enzymes uh, get backed up, and so you need uh, the pancreatic uh, lipase, okay? So uh, which of the following is associated with, uh, or the pancreatic lipase is associated with this? Which of the following is associated with the transmembrane dysfunction for this patient condition? And we remember what we said is um, in cystic fibrosis, uh, if we're in a sweat or, what, or whatnot, we said that this was, these are ATP gated, okay? And that's more of a, it could be more of a, in the, in the farm section, we'll talk, we'll talk more about how that is. And you better know diacylglycerol, cyclic AMP, G protein, you know, all, all these are kind of associated, but when it comes to cystic fibrosis, you, you just associate it with uh, the ATP. Some other things that you need to, to obviously know is that, again, uh, the cystic fibrosis um, receptor, receptor there, we need to know that it works on the chloride channel, obviously. That's like the big, the big thing. 
Um, and then there's this one deletion that they, you, you, sometimes you see a lot in the questions, is, and this means that delta means deletion. Believe it or not, the F, don't shoot the messenger, means phenylalanine, okay? And then the 508 is the 508th amino acid, okay, protein. And that's the majority, majority, I think they say around 65% of cases of cystic fibrosis deal with that. So if you see that, you better be jumping all over um, cystic fibrosis. And the other thing that they associate it with is you're gonna think in-frame, uh, let's say in-frame mutation. Okay, so all these ATP gated, uh, the deletion, uh, the 508th CFTR, in frame mutation, all associated with uh, cystic fibrosis. This one says a seven year old male with recurrent respiratory um, infections is found to have absence of the cystic fibrosis regulatory uh, regulator. I'm sorry, um, yeah, it's a regulator, not receptor. On the epithelial surfaces, which of the following would have hypertonic? fluids on their surface. Okay, so sweat, pancreatic, large airway. I mean, when we look at this, okay, we, we know that this stands by itself compared to this guy, this guy, this guy. They're all in the same boat. So, but again, if we're to doing, doing it like we should, we know, again, sodium chloride, and we got these little CF, these CFTR guys are all, all messed up, so it doesn't work. They get pushed out. So where would the hypertonic uh, fluids be in this? And hypertonic just means there's more, you know, how they say that, more sol solutes. Um, and you'll have more solutes in the, um, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I should, this one stands by itself. I don't know why I jumped all over that. Uh, this one should be the sweat gland, which would be the one that we're, we're describing. And again, my, my apologies. It should be pancreas. The pancreas goes, goes with the lung on this. These are all associated with each other. The answer to this one where the hypertonic fluids is gonna be in the sweat duct, okay? My fault on that. And vasodeferins, these are absent, okay? Absent when it comes to in congenitally, congenitally absent um, cystic fibrosis, so that shouldn't even be, uh, it's more of a distractor. Which of the following is the, patient's mo is, is the patient most likely to die from? Well, again, remember how we talked about uh, perforated bowel, vitamin deficiency, respiratory infection, cancer, AV valve formation. You know, they're going to have some of, you know, some of these are going to have, uh, but when we say which one are you going to die from, and they, you hear about dying from like Pseudomonas, um, Staph aureus, things like that, that is going to be the respiratory infection. And again, like in the lung, you know, you have the, the cilia, and if you have those thick secretions in there, these things aren't going to be able to kind of you know, push out uh, the garbage that comes in there. So with cystic fibrosis, you gotta be worried about the respiratory infection. <laughs>